Whatever you got, you know, you're saying that today. Uh, I love that. I love having a guest minister that comes, but not only comes and says, hey, what do you want? But it's just, it's nice to play that and say whatever, whatever you get in your heart. So bring it. Mike, not on there. There we go. It is. There we go. Good to see you. You came on Sunday night. Wow. Boy, you know it's the last days when we're meeting and meeting and meeting. Well, the Bible says that, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as some would do, especially as you see the day approaching. So he tells us right there that we can see the day approaching, and we're going to gather all the more. There's something about hearing the word. It just transforms us, the incorruptible seed. I said it this morning, but, you know, I go back to a time when my mother took me to a meeting in Shreveport, Louisiana, 1970, to hear Brother Hagen. And, man, my mom just went crazy. She would, we'd, we'd go to Phoenix. We'd go to Pittsburgh. We'd go to uh, uh, all over the country to hear Brother Hagen. And there's something about being in those meetings, the word, the word, the word. I know it was a focus on the word, but it got us to where we're not moved by what we feel, not moved by what we see, but we're moved by what the word says about us. And there's a stability to that. And the reason being is the Bible talks about the atmosphere you'd see in the church just before the coming of the Lord. Steadfastness is mentioned six different times. So there's something about the word getting in you that makes you unshakable, unmovable. You, you live around people that they're freaked out about everything, and you're freaked out about nothing. Hallelujah. Your biggest concern should be that you have no concern. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's have church tonight. Come on. This Sunday night. Let's, let's, in, let's let the Lord do what he wants to do. We got into a little bit this morning about uh, how close we are to the coming of the Lord. We talked about the signs of the second coming. Yeah, we know the rapture is signless, so gosh, you get into all the signs of the second coming. It's just a, absolutely amazing how God made it blatant so we could tell. And then, you know, we, we, we got uh, an, an appointment with God. We talked about the reward seat of Christ this morning. Boy, that was always abused over the years. It was always preached as the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, that's a mistranslation. The word is beam, a reward seat. He wants to reward you. He wants to bless you. You know, we think of sometimes the Lord coming back. He's coming back. He's going to kill everybody. No. He said, my reward is with me. So he wants to bless you. He wants you happy. He wants you hopeful. Oh, the devil is a liar. Pants on fire. Amen. How many, how many of you have ever had the devil tell you, you're just doing such a great job, everything's going to be great? No, he's always trying to torment people. And I've always seen so much uh, opposition to the plan of God. But that's all right. That's why Daniel saw you and prophesied about you, said you'd know your God, you'd be strong, and you'd do exploits. Man, I like that heaven's already told us what we look like. Glory to God. Amen. That's a good thing, isn't it? Well, we're, this season, I believe, just before we're caught up, you'll see manifestations of the Holy Ghost through the church, gifts of the Spirit, harvesting tools, radical authority in the name of Jesus. I think we'll see miracles on live TV. I remember I was preaching in Tucson one time, and I talked about reality TV. This is 1990. And I said, the biggest popular show that's going to be on is going to be called Reality TV. And everybody looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, what's the biggest reality TV show on right now? And a man yelled out, Baywatch. I said, that's not reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> and I began to talk about A.A. A. Allen, talked about William Branham, and talked about Allen a lot while I was there. And uh, just the miracles they had. I mean, if you look back on YouTube, I mean, crazy. Alan would take a guy's was in a car wreck, take his neck back and snap it like that and said, you're healed. And the guy would roll around the floor and pop up healed. And uh, just, just amazing miracles. Uh, Raymond T. Ritchie in Tulsa, Oklahoma had so many miracles. They had to haul away uh, the wheelchairs in flatbed trucks. I mean, have you ever been to a meeting where they had to haul wheelchairs away like that? That's pretty radical. That was all happening during the healing revival of the 50s. Well, I was in Tucson, you know, talking about that. And this man walked up to me after the service. He goes, hey, I'm A.A. Allen's son. I said, well, nice to meet you. I'm Billy Graham. And he goes, no, no, I, I thought he was playing a joke on me. He goes, no, no, I'm A.A. Allen's son. I forgot that A.A. Allen had moved to Tucson to Miracle Valley with his ministry. And listen to what he said to me. This is A.A. Allen's son said to me. He said, those miracles were great for my dad's day. He said, but I see a day when believers are functioning just like those healing evangelists did during the 50s. Because the Bible says we would do the same works that he did. Not similar, same. Hallelujah. So uh, whether, whether we're ready or not, uh, we're it. You're it. <laughs> the, the baton's been handed off to you. So there's, a, there's a, a destiny for your life. And you can see what that picture is. It's John 14. He said we'd do the same works that he did. And he gave us a couple of keys there, which I'm not preaching on this tonight. But he gave us two keys to function just like him. Authorization, presence. Authorization and presence. He gave you authority and then he put himself in you. Hallelujah. So what a, what a dual working there for the believer to function just like Jesus. 
So we, we have a lot to shoot for. This is the season where we're just all in. I know we hear that all the time, but I mean, it's a, it's a time where there's, there's no drawing back. Give the Lord all of your heart. And I know you love him. You wouldn't be here on Sunday night. You love him. You, you can tell you love him because you're here. So watch as we get into the word tonight, little things get articulated in your heart, little things get dialed up. There's always a reassessing of what your call is, a reassessing of what God's given you to do so that you pick up the pace. Because how many of you think all of us could do a little bit more? Amen. Praise God. That went over real good. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. All right. No, we always shoot for more. If, if, if you're satisfied where you are, that's fine. But I like what Wigglesworth said. He said, I would rather be with a meeting, in a meeting with a man that was not filled with the Holy Spirit but was hungry for it than someone that was filled with the Spirit but not hungry for it. Chew on that for a minute, praise the Lord, because there's something about hunger. There's something about spiritual hunger that shows up in your life. It, it, it's just, it's, there's a great joy about you. There's a great peace about you because that, that makes Jesus happy, and that's what we want. We want to make him smile. So grab your Bibles, and you just turn wherever you think you ought to turn. Once again, we'll see if you're flowing. So did anybody get Matthew? Anybody get that? Matthew chapter 28, praise the Lord. I have a, something different I'm going to preach on tonight because because uh, we, I was going to do Millennium tonight, going to do a couple other things. So we'll just see if we start this direction. Maybe we take a little bit into it and go a little bit the other way. We'll see. I'll give you a couple uh, testimonies. I love to give testimonies before I preach uh, just so we can see so many things are happening uh, all the time. You know, I tell you the different ones. I was in Australia. I was in uh, Sydney preaching in the Bible school in Brisbane. Went over to Sydney to preach in this other church. And the worship leaders told his wife, whatever you do, you make sure our daughter comes to church today. Because she wasn't excited about coming because she knew I was an end times guy. We didn't want to hear about end times. So the, the dad told the mom he had to go early to pr practice and prepare for worship. Whatever you do, you make sure she comes. So they came. And while I was preaching on end times, I could see her right there. On the, I didn't know who she was, but I could see her on the second or third row. She wasn't really excited about the message. You know, communication is facial expression. 57% of communication is facial expression. She was communicating to me she did not want to be there and that she did not like end time. So I'm, I'm preaching as hard as I can trying to, you know, get her, uh, win her over and didn't win her over at all. End of the service, I had a word of knowledge that someone had damage in their tailbone. I just said, you're healed. Finished up the service, you know, had a couple more words of knowledge. That young lady and her, her dad came walking down with the wife right there. She was number eight in pole vaulting in Australia and had fallen and busted her tailbone. And the Lord healed her right there in that service. She was just crying here in a service, not wanting to be there. And the Lord pours out his mercy. Listen to this one. This one's going to freak you out. This one still messes with me. Just a few months ago, I was in Newtown, Connecticut. I was in a meeting with several other ministers, and I'd been to that church many times, Barry and Sheila Fredericks, wonderful people. Well, this woman came up to me after the service. I was kind of sitting down for just a moment as we finished, you know, and everybody was talking. She walked up to me. She said, would you pray for me? I said, sure. I go, what's wrong? She goes, I was in a car wreck. My neck is messed up. My back's messed up. I said, no problem. Laid hands on her and prayed for her. I go, how you doing? She goes, oh, man, I'm healed. I came down here to disprove you. Have you ever heard of anybody doing that? That's crazy. She came down to disprove me and got healed. The Lord is so not, he's so much nicer than I am. I would have gone like, you ornery thing. You came down here to disprove the guy and you still get healed? I mean, God's just merciful. Come on. You talk about mercy. I'll give you one more because this will bless you. One more. I was in Marietta, California, preaching on gifts of the spirit. They invited some golfers to come. Some, not the PGA tour, but the tour just below that, like the Nike tour or whatever. I can't remember what, what, what one it was. I didn't know who they were, though, but a buddy of mine said we got all these golfers back there. They'd never been in a Holy Ghost-type church. So I was preaching along. I had a word of knowledge. I said, there's someone here. You got damage in your calf. I said, it looks like varicose veins, but it's not varicose veins. It's like you got hit by a two before. And this man yelled out, damn, he cussed right there in church. Everybody heard him. He screamed it out loud. And I just found out the other day that he cussed all the way down. I didn't, I didn't even hear him because everybody's laughing so hard. He cussed the whole way down. He was at a Home Depot, and this thing broke and fell down, and a two before hit him in the back of his leg, and he was going to have to go in and get it taken care of. And the Lord reaches out and loves on him in spite of him cussing in church. <laughs> so he's so much more kinder than we are. His mercy endures forever. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Let's get right into this. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness. You are our good. Your mercy endures forever. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you for dying for us, Jesus. Jesus, we, we see you exalted. Hallelujah. Majesty on high. 
so much better than the angels. You being the victor, the king, the authorized one, right there at the right hand of God. So thank you what you've given your church. We recognize you as, as, as the, the king and the creator. And what you gave your church in the last days, you gave your church authority. You gave your church the word. You gave us a place in the last days to get the message out all over the world. Father, what you've given beyond church, Lord, we thank you for a renewal uh, of uh, li- literally calls and, a, and assessings of different equipment that you've given from heaven. A day we pick up that equipment, that harvesting equipment, and walk with you, speak for you, demonstrate for you, every person in this room. We thank you for it, Father. We give you glory, give you honor and praise. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen. Let's go, if you would, to Matthew 28, and we'll start with verse 1. And he, he starts here in Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the... Is there, I'm going a little, a little faster. Let me slow down for you. Matthew 28, verse 1. You ready? Page 43, if you got a Bible like mine. Does anybody have a 43 on their Bible? Man, oh man, I need to find that new Bible. Here we go. (laughs) Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Don't you love how cool the Lord is? The angel goes, no problem, rolls the stone back and sits there. Glory to God. So it says uh, uh, in verse 4, For the fear of him the keepers did shake and became... Well, look at verse 3. This is worthy. His countenance was like lightning. His raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. There's a verse right there that shows you that people can fall out under the power of God. These guys fell out under under the presence of an angel. But don't you love the thought pattern? Jesus, uh, the angel here, talks about, uh, th- this is so cool, he's raised from the dead. In verse 5, the angel answered and said to the women, Fear not, you know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Wow, the first proclamation of, of Jesus being alive was done by the ministry of angels. So I want to get into something tonight that I don't get to preach on that often, and that is the ministry of angels. I want to show you what's going to be happening just before we leave the planet, not weird, not strange. I'm a word guy. I grew up in a word house. My mother told me, don't, have, don't ask, the, uh, to ask to have an angel appear to you because you got a more sure word of prophecy. So I'm word, 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 not weird, 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 word, word, word. Even reluctant to preach on it, but when we hear some of the things that God's done over the years and how big he is, it stretches your faith to see how big he is because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and just like I talked about a while ago when, when those meetings there in Tucson, there's been such a limitation on how big God is. Now listen to this. The lady that started that church in Tucson, his name is Louise Brock. She used to play the organ for William Branham. And if you didn't know who William Branham was, he was one of those evangelists in the 50s. And man, he would stand up. They would line up and walk up like this. And he'd go, uh, you know what? You're so-and-so. You live at such-and-such. And, such, and your, your dad's a pastor. And the board's trying to attack the pastor. And, and you have a goiter right now. Be healed. Boom, the goiter leave. Next person would come up. He goes, you live at 1277 South such-and-such such a street. And your appendix was about to burst. And the doctor just told him. I mean, just read their mail. Just Our generation hasn't really seen that. But uh, we, we're, we're living in a season where there's going to be an explosion of it right before we leave. That's why there's two things he said don't be misinformed about. Number one, gifts of the Spirit. Number two, the coming of the Lord. Why? Just before the coming of the Lord, there'll be some activities of the Holy Ghost. Not weird, not strange, but harvesting tools. And that's why we look at the ministry of angels here. You're going to see uh, it without with it, zero fanfare whatsoever. So Hank, run with me mentally for just a little bit. In the book of Acts, you see angels mentioned, zero fanfare. Just normal. Remember the angel of the Lord appeared to Cornelius and, and told him to go to send men to Joppa to where they could hear words they could be saved. The angel didn't preach to him, but told him where they could go and, and send men down there that someone would preach to him. So the angel appeared to a prayer and a giver. Hallelujah. So it was the ministry of angels that kind of jump-started the gospel going to the Gentiles. Think about that. The ministry of angels was used to jumpstart the, the gospel getting to the Gentiles. Pretty radical. But you see angels mentioned in the book of Acts, and people don't freak out at all. all. To the point, it's so much involved. Remember when uh, 
uh, Peter was put in jail and they were going to gonna kill him and cut his head off. They'd, they'd already killed James, you know, and Peter's next. He's laying there in bed. He's so at peace. He's sound asleep. Well, the Bible says that there was constant and earnest prayer for Peter. All of a sudden, the angel sends the Lord there. The, the Lord sends an angel there, knocks on his door, comes in, and Peter's sound asleep. The night before, he's going to get killed. And the angel says, get up. Has to wake him up. Says, man, put your clothes on. We're getting out of here. Now, watch this. The, the angel took Peter out of the building, went outside the outside of the gates and then went outside the gates of the city and Peter said I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me he had so many visions he wasn't even sure if it was actually physically happening until he got on the outside of the city and then what did he do he ran to the house where they were praying for him and Rhoda answered the door and said it's Peter and she they said no it's his angel so I guess they knew what his angel looked like or sounded like. That's kind of bizarre, isn't it? So they did it without any weirdness. But what you'll see right here before the coming of the Lord is every time there's a dispensation change, there's an explosion of activities of the ministry of angels. You think of Zacharias. Remember, uh, Gabriel <laughs> told him, you're going to have a son, name him John. And he's like, ah, I could just hear him, well, I don't want to name him John. He goes, by the way, you won't be able to speak for nine months, working of miracles. Notice the connection between the ministry of angels and the working of miracles. There's something about what we'll see here pretty soon that's really going to bless us because there's going to be such an acceleration to it. And you'll notice all the way through the book of Acts, all the way through the Gospels, Gabriel appears to Mary. You're going <laughs> you're to have a baby without a mate. We were talking about that today. How crazy. Is that that, that, that that didn't even face Gabriel. And Mary goes, how's that going to be? And he said, don't worry, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Therefore, that holy thing that shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. Wow. He said, isn't that something that, f- fear not, Gabriel's trying to tell Mary something's going to happen. So you see the ministry of angels helping getting people in position. You see the ministry of angels with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was m- uh, literally sweating drops of blood. And the Bible said that angels came there and strengthened him and ministered to him. We probably all, none of us in this room would be alive if it wasn't for the ministry of angels. Amen. I mean, I think about all the times I had wrecks on motorcycles, and when I woke up, a guy was standing over me going, is he alive? And, then, and it's because of my mom saying, Lord, you give, you've given your angels charge over him to keep him in all his ways, lest he dash his foot against the stone. One wreck I had, I came up over this jump, and next thing I know, I have a full face bell helmet on. This is 1973, 74. Bell helmets were new back then, full face. I flipped and crashed, and I was, I was racing motocross, came to a stop, and when I came to a stop, my full, my full face bell helmet had been pushed down like that, and the clutch of the, of the gear shift was in my mouth. I went, ah, and I was like, am I still, I, I went and started going like this, am I still alive? I looked back at the dirt where my foot pegs and my motorcycle had flipped. It had gone from probably here past those doors, and I ended up on top of the motorcycle with that clutch in my mouth. Did not have a scratch on my body. I guarantee you, my mom was probably the day before commanding angels, you have charge over Joe, keep him in all his ways. Because you look back at all that stuff. You know how when you're driving a car, all of a sudden you look down or something, something tells you to look up, and you look up, and there's a car right there? Uh, that's probably, probably your angel. Amen. The Bible says that the, the angels do but always behold the face of my Father for these children. So apparently, they can be at the throne and come back to the earth and guard, guard us at the same time. They're that fast. How cool is that? Praise the Lord. But let's go talk about this. There are several different classes of angels. The word angel just means messenger. So you see different classes. You you got cherubim, you got seraphim. Boy, those guys are weird. You got one of them that cl- cl- cover their face with two hands, cover their feet with two hands, and the other one uh, has wings they fly with. One of them has eyes around his head all the way around his is is a. Uh, he can see everywhere at all the time. How weird is that? You talk about radar. That's weird radar. But the Bible calls them living creatures, cherubim and seraphim. But the highest ranking angel in the Bible really is the Lord Jesus. In the Old Testament, the Bible says that it was the angel of the Lord. It was actually Jesus himself. Let's go look at it. We'll get into some stuff tonight. Everybody with me for a little bit? Go back to Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 5. And we'll look at the highest class of angels, and then we'll get into some more stuff about the ministry of angels, how the Lord is going to help us and accelerate things right here for the very end. All right, Joshua 5, chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass that when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said unto him, Are, are you for us or are you our adversaries? He said, No, but as the captain 
of the hosts of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord to his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place where thou stands is holy. And Joshua did so. So this wasn't an ordinary angel. Most angels, all the time, people tried to worship them, and they say, Hey, don't worship me. We don't worship angels. But this one took honor because this was Jesus himself, the angel of the Lord. Wow. Because he basically said, you're doing righteous by, by honoring me. And here Jesus said, take your shoes off. Isn't it something that God's so holy, he make the dirt holy where you're standing? Don't you love that? <laughs> he, he's so holy, his expression of his holiness goes to where it takes care of the dirt you're around. Wow. And we're about to see that. We're about to see the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Wow, think about that, what we're about to see, how glorious he is. The Bible said there's no need for the sun. It didn't say there isn't a sun, no need for it because of the glory that's in his faith. Wow, that's going to be awesome. So here we see the highest class of angels. Let's go look at some more stuff. Go over to uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms. Look at 100, Psalms 101, and we'll get into all this angel stuff now. I can't believe I'm preaching on angels tonight, but we'll get into it. How's that? I got one that's good. Praise God. All right. Got a couple of grunts. Go to Psalms 103. <laughs> Psalms 103. Let's look at this for just a little bit. Psalms chapter 103. Look at verse 17. And it's uh, page 708 if you've got a Bible like mine. It says, but, but the mercy of the Lord, it is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and to righteousness of the children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Watch this. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. So we see here what activates angels is the word of God. I don't want to get to heaven and look at my angel and he goes, man, I had a treadmill because you never kept me going anywhere. I had to, had to exercise on the side. No, I want my angel wore out because I'm speaking the word so much because speaking the word of God puts angels into activity. I've heard one guy say, your, your voice is your address on the earth. I want those angels to go perking up going, man, I hear, I hear someone speaking the word. I got to get rocking right now. So they're activated by the word of God. So, and I'll, I'll give, give you a few crazy uh, stories, so just hang with me a little bit. You know, growing up in that word home uh, where my mom's word, 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 you don't need a vision of an angel, you got a more sure word of prophecy. So I almost would rebuke <laughs> uh, visions when I would have them. So about, uh, I went to Raymond in 1980, I worked for a guy named Mark Brzee, I mowed his grass, washed his cars, ran tapes, and uh, a little bit of everything, and, and did those other jobs so I could work for Brother Mark. And just enjoyed it. Didn't, didn't, want to, didn't want to be in the ministry. Just wanted to help those guys. Never wanted to preach. Mark would make me go to a meeting. I'd have a word of knowledge. I'd see a woman sitting by her bed wanting to kill herself. And, and she said, if, if any more pressure comes, I'm going to die. She took this blanket out. And Mark goes, Joe, you got something? I said, no, nope, don't have anything. Next, next thing you know, I have to get up. And there's that, that lady's right there. I go, that lady right there. This is what you just said last week. So I knew I was supposed to preach but didn't want to. So once I got into working for him, I started working with this prophet and traveling with this prophet for a few years. You talk about wild. This guy had such demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. It was just radical. So I was up in Seekonk, Massachusetts. This is at Sam Smith's church. I was there probably four or five times. But the first time I was there with that prophet, you know, uh, I was there helping him in the prayer line. And <laughs> I would be in the prayer line with him. And the glory of God would be so strong. If I did not think about sports, I'd fall out under the power. And if I, if, I, if I just got in neutral, I'm on the floor. He goes, well, you're no good to help for me, you know. So I'd get back to the hotel, and from helping him in the prayer line, my hands would burn so bad, I'd put my hands over the air conditioner because I couldn't take it. It was so strong. Well, in one of the nights there in Seekonk, there was a, 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 a lower ceiling in that building, kind of an old metal building. And I was working for the man there and kind of helping him in the prayer line. And the, Lord, the Holy Ghost said, back away from him. I thought, well, back away from him. How am I supposed to help him if I back away from him? I backed away from him. Boom. All of a sudden, my eyes were open. What's called in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's called discerning of spirits. It means to see into that spiritual realm. doesn't mean to sense. 
doesn't mean to wonder. It means to see. Well, man, my I don't know how it works perfectly, but my eyes are opened up, and I saw angels on either side of the preacher. And every move he made, they were like guarding him just like that. There were angels right there uh, uh, when people were being caught. He had, you had you have catchers, you know, in the old days. The angels were catching people like that. And uh, they were so tall, their heads kind of went up into the drop ceiling like that, and they were kind of hunched over. I know their head could probably go through the ceiling, but they were hunched over like that because they were so tall. They were radiant in the glory of God. There's a purity about that realm that just kind of freaks you out when you see that. So I'm seeing this, and I'm freaking out because I'm a word guy. I'm thinking, I'm not having a vision. I'm I'm not losing my mind. (laughs) And I look up, and one of the angels looked at me and smiled from ear to ear. Big, big man, you know, looked like a linebacker. I almost took off and ran through the door. I'm like, dear God, this guy just smiled at me while he's doing all this. So the Lord was trying to get me ready for when that would help happen in, in my ministry. I wouldn't freak out and want to leave the service. Because, you know, the Lord wants to do some radical things. We put so many limitations on him. You remember in the 50s, uh, Brother Hagin tells the story of that assembly of God got together. A young man had seen angels and had visions, saw Jesus. They called him on the carpet and brought him down in front of the guys and were going to hammer him. And you know what Brother Hagin said? Boy, don't you love this? Brother Hagin said, well, if you're going to take away the supernatural from us, what are you going to put in place of it? He said, I'm not concerned that this young man seeing vision. I'm concerned that we're not all seeing visions. Well, that went over good. Good night, everybody. Start the car. I'll be right there. Come on. All right, so after that, that started happening all the time to where I literally thought I was losing my mind. Because remember, Brother Hagin, Jesus told him, uh, at a certain point in your ministry, from here on out, you'll have discerning of spirits in operation when you're in the spirit. Not when you're playing football, not when you're playing golf, when you're in the spirit. So that would happen in meetings. I would see that man praying for someone. Now watch, this is Indianapolis, Indiana. He's praying for this lady, and, and I stood up there beside him. Also, the Lord said, back away. Huge angels right there with this woman. She fell out under the power. Now watch, she fell forward, and her face stopped that high off the ground. And there was an angel messing with her back. And that preacher goes, there's an angel messing with her back. I thought, thank you, Jesus. I'm not losing my mind. Because I would see it, and that guy would say it. And I'm like, the Lord did it just to help me so I wouldn't freak out. Because I'm normal. Okay? And you talk about weird. This woman's laying flat like this with her face about that high off the ground. And the preacher said, everybody get out of your seat. Come down and look at this. Everybody walk down like that. This is Indianapolis, Indiana. They all gathered around her. Then right then, the angel picked that woman up. And you talk about people freaking out. No one saw that angel. He picked her up. You think people are going wild and people fall out? Wait till people start picking up by themselves. Come on. I mean, everybody went, everybody went like this, glory to God. I mean, there's a, there's a weird fear that comes on people, just like in the book of Acts, because he's God. He's God. And you know what? There, we, 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 we bypass some of these supernatural things because people got weird, but just because people got weird doesn't mean we're going to get weird. We're word people, and the word promises us some demonstrations of, of heavenly things. I mean, all throughout the book of Acts, ministry of angels all throughout that. Let me give you a couple of them. Hang with me, hang with me. I was in Detroit, Michigan, and I was praying for a friend of mine in the ministry. Boy, he was going through a test. You know how when you, when you know someone, it wasn't just the Holy Ghost telling you, you, you. Everybody said, man, that guy's going through it. So I thought, well, right before I went to bed that one night, I'm just going to do some praying for that guy. And I prayed the word. You know, I prayed, you, Father, he'll finish his course with joy. He's a disciple taught to you, Lord, graze his peace and uncircumposure. He hearkens unto the voice of the Lord, stranger's voice he does not follow. He, you, he delights himself in you, and you give him the desires of his heart. And I'm praying this prayer. All of a sudden, I felt special faith come on me. All of a sudden, I felt an authority that's greater than I really have. I don't have it in that man's life. And, man, I felt it come on me. I started decreeing things for him. It went from ordinary, quoting the word, to special faith, one of the power gifts of the Spirit. And, man, I'm telling you, I knew exactly what it was. I'm like, oh, here we go. This is cool. So I started commanding some things for that preacher. Next thing you know, an angel comes and stands right there at the foot of my bed. Scared me so bad, the hair on the back of my head shot up like that. And I'm like, ah. He said, I've been sent from the... And he looked like a linebacker. looked like 9 to 10 feet tall. Looked like, he looked like he, he just stout. That he bench presses 500 pounds. I didn't even think about it. He said, I've been sent from the throne of God to tell you this. And delivered a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom for the guy I was just praying for. He brought the answer to the prayer I was praying for. Kind of crazy. So I told that minister that was going through that test that, that what the angel said. You know what he said to me? He goes, why didn't the angel appear to me? I said, I don't know. I was praying for you. I didn't ask you to see an angel. I'm praying for you. Some angel shows up. This is, the thing is, is the message. Okay, now watch this. Within about a year, a pastor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Willie George, came up to me and said, hey, Joe, I had a dream two nights in a row about this friend of yours in the ministry. I said, really, what was it? Word. 
for word what that angel said in that hotel room. I'm thinking, Lord, you're really trying to get that across to him, aren't you? Next thing you know, I'm in a meeting. Keith Moore walks over in front of that preacher, holds his hand out just like this, and starts quoting word for word what that angel said in that hotel room. So here God tried first with an angel. Next with Willie had a dream. Keith had his inward revelation. He's just trying to get his will wrought in the earth. And with, along with that, we should see some activities of the ministry of angels without any weirdness whatsoever. Amen. But I'm preaching on this tonight because that's what we're going to see. So don't freak out. Just go, wow, God's moving. Whether you see them or not, they're here tonight. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. All right, I'll give you a couple more. Let me give you a couple more. These are crazy. How many of you know where uh, Oakland, Iowa is? Right outside of uh, Council Bluffs, uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Michael Kalstrup is the pastor's name. This is how normal they are. I taught their sons how to use their hand brakes to do 180s on the snow. I didn't tell them to do this on dry pavement. I, told, I taught them how to do it on snow. So we, we'd pull into the hotel, and they're, they're like 15 and 16. They'd hit their handbrakes and spin their car around. I go, there you go. You're doing it. Well, I leave, and they start doing it on hot, dry pavement and ruin the hubs of their wheels. So the pastor, every time I come, he goes, yeah, Joe taught my boys how to ruin the wheels on their car. I said, no, I did it on snow. So, so, in, so I know the family real well, and I know all the kids, you know. So I'm preaching there one year. This is probably about 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I had a word of knowledge that someone had damage in their shoulder and in their back. They were in a car wreck. You know, so many of my words of knowledge are always almost a car wreck or something. Not disease, but damage. Well, several people came down, and by the time we finished calling some things out, this is back when I wasn't preaching on end times as much because you had a little more time to minister to people. Probably maybe 10 or 15 people were there, and I'm standing up there getting ready to minister to that one lady, and all of a sudden the Lord said, back away from her. And I had my hand on her shoulder praying for her. When I, when I pray over people that need healing, I pray the word. I, I pray you're redeemed from the curse of the law. I, evict, I say, Satan, I evict you from God's property. You're trespassing. You get off their body. They, it is written by the stripes of Jesus. They're healed. It is written they're redeemed from the curse of the law. As I'm praying that, the Lord said, back away from her. Now, I remember I'd heard that before, it, traveling with that guy. So I thought, well, okay, no problem. I backed away from her like that. Boom. All of a sudden, huge angel standing right there. Had his hand on her shoulder, and I kept praying for her. I didn't say a word about the angel. I kept praying for her. And I said, you're healed. Praise the Lord. After it's over, I go, how are you doing? And she goes, she goes I'm good, my shoulder's good. And there were so many people in the line, I didn't really stay with her very long. I probably should have stayed with her a little bit longer, but I kept moving. You know what I'm saying? So when the service was over, Pastor Mike came walking up to me. I said, hey, you remember that lady that was in the car wreck that hurt her shoulder? I said, you know what? An angel stood right there behind her. And he goes, oh, cool. No big deal. Right then, that woman came walking up. She goes, hey, I want to talk to you. She said, I, I felt your hand on my shoulder while you were praying for me, but then you walked away and I could still feel a hand on my shoulder. And I looked at Pastor Mike, and I gave him a little wink. I didn't tell the woman, the angel of the Lord has visited you tonight. No. I said, you're redeemed from the curse of the law. You know what she said? She said, I didn't get a chance to tell you everything. After you prayed for my neck and my back, the power of God went down into my leg. She had a, a severed Achilles tendon, and she went back to her seat. She goes like this, oh, my God, my tendon is completely whole. So the fruit of that angel standing there with his hand on her wasn't just that she got her shoulder healed. She got her Achilles tendon healed too. Did, I didn't say a word about the angel to her. I sat there and talked to Pastor Michael. How cool is that? You know, unfortunately, we've backed away from all this because people got so flashy. I was on the Sid Roth program years ago, 1994, about angels and miracles. And, you know, it seems like, uh, and Sid Roth is such a great guy, but you know what they wanted me to do with my book? This is what they wanted me to do. Watch. You ready for this? Because the marketing people work with Sid Roth's company. Why? They wanted me to go, folks, every single one of you in the sound of my voice, when you come in the meeting tonight, every one of you will be healed. The miracle power of God is coming on you right now. I said, I'm not going to do that. That's what they want me to do. I said, you want me to act like a guy from the 50s? You're crazy. The problem is you, you, you have miracles and angels are involved. All of a sudden, there be, begins to be flash. Remember, where there's flash, there's flesh. So it, it can be low-key, but you never once see Jesus going, check this out, guys. No, he was pretty low-key about everything. Hang with me. Let me give you, give you a couple more stories. I got, gosh, I can go all night with stories, so I won't keep you too long. You everybody with me for a little bit? I was in Corpus Christi, Texas, 1992. How do I know 1992? It's because the service that morning was so dead. I told them it was just a dead, flat service, you know, and I told the Lord, I got back to my hotel. I said, Lord, I'm not on the road all the time to have dead services. You know, I don't like this. 
And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do anything for the service tonight. I said, in fact, I'm going to watch Fred Couples win the Masters. And he won the Masters that day. It was awesome. That was the day he won. And I said, you know what? This is terrible. I said, Lord, you want to do something in the service tonight? Knock yourself out. I'm not going to do anything. Because I was frustrated. Don't, don't look at me so holy. Come on. He knows how you think anyway. <laughs> so I said, hey. I said, Lord, you want to do something in the service tonight? Knock yourself out. I said, I'm not going to do anything. Watched golf all day. Because normally I study, I pray, I listen to music, I listen to worship music, and, and I didn't do that. I was being ornery, you know, just getting in the flesh. So, you know, uh, Freddie wins the Masters. I get ready to go to the service, and I'm going, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. I didn't prepare or anything, you know. I get there, and the pastor's name is Jim Harris, and we, I get there. The worship starts going, you know, and I'm just kind of standing over here like this. All of a sudden, the glory of God comes in. Pastor Jim grabs a hold of the podium like this. Next thing you know, Jesus is standing right there on the steps, has a white robe on and a burgundy sash, and points his finger at me and goes, Tell them! He screams at me. Right as he's doing that, Pastor Jim grabs a hold of the podium, and the podium falls over like this. Crash! Jesus goes, Tell them! I wish I could do it without freaking out the sound. Tell them! I did miracles as a man. Tell them I walked on the water as a man. Tell them I cast out devils as a man, not as God. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. So we think to have angels in operation, we've got to be some weird group. Here Jesus did everything he did as a man. Now, you know what, you know what Corpus Christi stands for? Body of Christ. That message is for the body of Christ. So that believers would function just like Jesus. What did Jesus do? He... <laughs> He, he said, I cast out devils with the finger of God. And he said, if I wanted to, I could call on a legion of angels. Now, I don't know if I have that kind of authority, but I do know this. I'm going to see more in operation. So we're going to see more of the unseen realm. What you're seeing right now with Israel, I didn't talk about it this morning, but in October 7th, they took children and burned them in front of their parents. They cut babies' heads off and strung them up. They, they raped women and stabbed them while they were raping them. They cut people's hearts out. And here people are telling Israel, don't be hard on the, on, the, on the people in Lebanon, Hamas or Hezbollah. It's crazy. What you're seeing is an unseen war coming to pass where Jesus is going to come back just like at a movie and save the day. But you're watching all these players there. And that's why we're talking about the ministry of angels tonight because you're going to see God stretch forth his hand. That signs and wonders would be wrought by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And demonstrations would be wrought that Jesus is alive and well. And there'll be little seasons of, of the Jewish people finding out things about the Messiah even before the tribulation starts. Because we're getting ready to hand off to them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a wild, here, what a wild day it's going to be. Now, go over, if you would, to Hebrews. You with me for for a little bit more? I I got stories I could tell all night, but I want to give you a few more things, and we'll get a couple more stories. Hebrews chapter 2. Really, we should start with chapter 1. But it's so good. It's so, so good. Hmm. I can even quote it. I think it's so good. God, who at sundry times and divers manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, being the brightness of the glory of God and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when by himself he purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. Now, what he's going to explain here, he's going to explain the difference between the glory that's in Jesus and the glory that angels have. Now, watch this. And he wants us to get it. So, look there at Hebrews 1. Skip down to verse 5. For unto which of the angels said at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Watch this. And again I'll be to him a father, and he'll be to me a son. So, so he, he can't say that to an angel because they don't have that position with God. He's saying it to the Son. So then he says it again in verse 6. And again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he said that all the angels of God worship him. So he's showing you the position of Jesus being the head of all things and angels being just below that. But then he goes to verse, this is the cool one right here, verse 13. He's going to explain to you the, the difference right here in verse 13. But to which of the angels, now he's repeating himself. When God repeats himself, that means he wants us to get this. Because you don't see that very often. He's verbally repeating himself exactly. So look at verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make not enemies thy footstool? Okay. They don't have that position at the right hand of God, but they do have a position, and he's just about to tell you. Okay, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now, he doesn't stop there. We break it up with chapter 2. Watch this. Therefore, because of that, because they are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us, verse two, chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, or because of that, 
We ought to give them more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we would let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received just recompense and reward, talking about the receiving of the law, the law was given by the disposition of angels. Verse 3, this is cool. How shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him? Watch this. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So he shows you the position Jesus has as at preeminence. Shows you the position the angels have. They're sent forth to minister for you. Wow. And then he shows you gifts of the Spirit, distributions of the Holy Ghost, so that we can access that realm without being weird. Because you'd automatically think, well, I mean, my mom took me to Catherine Kuhn meetings. You know what I said? There's no way I can be in the ministry. I'm not weird enough. That's what I always say about your pastors. I love how normal they are. Not one time have I seen Pastor Nate go, do anything goofy like that. He's normal. Amen. But yet, when it comes to this supernatural stuff, watch how this works. Now, now I want you to get this. This is so amazing. Then we'll get into a couple more before we close. I had a buddy of mine went through a horrible divorce. His wife, bless her heart, she's lost her mind, went crazy, uh, thought that she was being, people were watching her, ripped out all the sockets out of her house. I mean, just went <laughs> loco crazy. So my, my buddy was going through this divorce, and she would never uh, come to mediation correctly because she just went crazy. <laughs> She lost, I think, 17 attorneys that they tried to work with her, and she, they got every one of them quit because she's crazy. She took a golf club. to his, He had a Porsche 911, took his golf club and beat the car up and tons of other stuff I could get into. That's just not right. <laughs> that's, that's not right at all. So he's getting ready to go into mediation. He goes, Joe, I've done mediation time after time after time. We can't get this fixed. I'm tired of paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to attorneys. So this is what I told him. I said, now listen, when you walk in there, just before you walk in there, you say, Lord, just as demons have tried to influence that woman, I thank you that the angels that you've sent to minister for me, they'll, 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 They'll have influence over her during that the whole meeting. And then when she gets out from that meeting, they won't have influence over her. He walked in the meeting. When she came in, she said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And everybody goes, like, what? She said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And was very calm, very collected, signed the paperwork correctly, walked outside the door and started screaming at the end of the hall. Uh, my buddy said, man, she went crazy after she came out of there. But while she was in there, just as demons influence people, angels can influence people for good. And we, we just don't hear much teaching on that. Brother Hagen taught on that. He said, angels, uh, go I, cause the money to come. He, goes, he, said, uh, you know, he, he basically said, God, Satan, take your hands off my finances. Angels, go and bring money unto me. And, and in other words, commission them to do things. So we, that's why he said we, we've neglected so great a salvation. In other words, we have access to this, but then have not used it. And then he's about to tell us something in here that's absolutely the coolest ever. You ready? You ready for the coolest thing ever? Watch what he says here. Look at verse 10, talking about Jesus. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Here we go. This is the verse 11 I want you to get. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. Which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Okay, so when you speak the word, angels hear it coming from the body of Christ. Okay, whether if you're doing it, it's coming from that part of the body of Christ. But here, what, what he said here is you, the angels almost can't tell who's coming from Jesus' body or, or, or your body. Let me read that again. I want you to get that because we sometimes don't realize what it says there. Verse 11 Both he that sanctifieth. And they that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause? He's not ashamed to call them brethren. So when you say it is written, that's coming from the body of Christ. It is written, and angels hearken to the voice of the word. They don't, har they don't hearken to my words. They hearken to God's words. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So if, we'll be, we'll, if our life is it is written, it is written, it is written, you'll put them in, in activization for you. Now hang with me. Let me give you a, a crazy one. You with, me, with me for it's quarter eight. We'll close here in just a second. Five more minutes, two minutes, is that cool? Is everybody remotely happy to be in church on Sunday night? Okay. 
I remember a buddy of mine, Ross Roberts, dear friend of mine, he, he uh, made me preach in the ministry because remember I told you I didn't want to preach. I wanted to help these other guys. I saw the hell they went through, and I, I wanted to help them. Man, they just went through hell. You're talking about an effectual door opening? One of the guys I worked for, one of the prophets, man, he was mad all the time because, see, the light attracts the bugs, so you have to deal with it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, a buddy of mine was going to make me go preach on this camp meeting, and I wasn't full-time in the ministry. I was actually ushering in Tulsa, so I wasn't on the road. You know, I'm just helping preachers. We get to this camp meeting, and Ross and I get off the plane, and the news media was there to greet us. There were posters all over town, Jesus is your healer. I didn't know that till later. So the news media comes, and they want to inter- interview me. I said, no, no, interview Ross, and watch what Ross did. He did Elvis Presley. He went like this. He goes like this, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so scary. He does Elvis Presley, and this is what he said. I just looked away like, oh, my God. And even the camera guy goes like this. He goes, he looks like this. And Ross goes, I dare you to come to the meetings. God will heal you. And he gets that crazy preacher look. Bring the sick. Bring the lame. Bring the halt. God will heal every one of them. I'm like, Ross, just, just invite them to come. Don't dare them to come. Don't, you know, don't. I mean, he gets that crazy preacher sound. You know, and I'm just like, oh, God. So we got there. And uh, I started that Sunday morning. And it was hideous. It was so bad. It was so bad. A lady walked up to me. She said, don't try to do this for a living. I said, I, I'm not. I'm not. It's okay. Actually, was, she wasn't the first lady to say that. That was about the fifth or sixth lady. So it was horrible, dead service. You know what I mean? Just, I mean, that, that a woman would say that, that's, that means it's a pretty flat service, right? So, you know, we're going to come back Sunday night, and Ross is going to preach, you know. And, and Ross wouldn't come in the meeting because the music was so bad. We're in the back room, and I, Ross, we got to go in. It's time to go in. He goes, I can't handle that music because they weren't singing about Jesus. They were singing about, you know, themselves. You know what I mean? You don't want to hear songs about yourselves. You want to talk songs to him. I love every one of your songs are about Jesus. So Ross, he goes, I can't even go in. I can't even go hear that. So I'll come in in a minute. I'm like, oh, man. So I'm standing there on the front row thinking, Ross, get in here. Ross, get in here. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm, get in here, Ross. I look up. All of a sudden, there's two huge angels standing about right here. And I was about where Pastor Nate is. I looked up at them, and I stuck my head. I thought, am I seeing this? I looked up at them, and they're staring at me. About 8, 10 feet tall, huge and that purity to that realm, I'm just kind of freaking out like, oh, here we go. Because at Raymond, they didn't tell me, this is what you do when two angels come stand there. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't going to bother them as long as they didn't bother me, okay? <laughs> so I kept looking down. I look up. They're still there. I kept looking down. And there were a bunch of kids in the service, about a section about like this, full of children. And there were angels. I saw angels all around the children at that time. They were all around them, like protecting them. So I kept looking up, and these two angels were standing right there. Just had this look of intentness on their eyes. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord Jesus, here we go. So Ross comes walking in. He goes, you got anything? I said, nope, nope, don't have anything. It's all over you. You got it, you got it, you got it. Because I don't know what to do. I'm not going to bother them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, maybe they're here to watch the service. I don't know. They probably want to hear Ross preach. <laughs> Amen. Because he's the craziest preacher you've ever heard in your life. If you'll stand up there and do Elvis to the TV people, you do pretty much anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> So Ross comes in, you got something? No, no, don't have anything. So he gets up and starts preaching, and the Holy Ghost says, those angels have come to deliver a woman a new heart. Well, I thought, well, that's cool. Ross will call that out. And the whole time he's preaching, they're standing here just like this, intently looking at me like this. And I'm kind of looking already like, eh, listen to what Ross is preaching, you know. So the Holy Ghost says, those angels have come to deliver a woman a new heart. At the end, Ross goes, you got something, Joe? I said, well, I guess I do. I said, there's somebody here. You, you got heart trouble. This lady was way over in the back. She got out and came walking down. She had symptoms of congestive heart failure. She looked like she's going to die before I could pray for her. You've seen people like that. I mean, she, she looked toast before I could even pray for her. So I kind of walked over there to meet her. As she comes walking down, I prayed for her. She falls out on the power. She gets up, goes back to her seat, vibrant. Her whole family and her came down and gave their life to the Lord. But she was transformed from looking like death to all of a sudden just, just vitality. I thought that was so cool. So she gets healed. That's Sunday night. She goes to the cardiologist on Monday. She goes walking in there. She goes bebopping in. And the cardiologist goes, what's up with you? She goes, I, I, I went to this crazy church service and I got healed. He goes, you're crazy. He goes, she goes, no, I really did. He goes, well, we'll see if you're healed or not. He did an EKG, did another EKG, did another EKG. She said, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> he said, you have the heart of a 17-year-old. That woman was on a transplant list. She got a brand new heart that night. The, the, the doctor was so freaked out, he called the news media. Remember the news media interviewed us? The news media came on Wednesday, and it was the craziest service I've ever been in in all my life. It scared me, and I'm not afraid of anything. I said, Lord, you get me through this meeting, I'll serve you all the days of my life. I mean, it, it was crazy young man on the wild trapeze. Woo, people were flying all over the place. And, of course, the news media would be at the craziest service we've ever had. 
Well, come Friday night, we walked in, and you know how you have your four-year here? Ross and I came in. There was a, a, we could not get in through the crowd. They said, no, no, we, we're supposed to speak. They said, no, you can't get past us. A lady brought me a purple, purple amethyst. People brought crystals. Why? The paper came out that afternoon. Angels bring woman new heart. Christ redeemed her from the curse of the law. That night, Ross preached the gospel. I, I, all these people from Latvia were there. All these people from overseas were there. And, and, and all these people came down and gave their life to the Lord. One lady was possessed of the devil. She started slivering like a snake going down the middle aisle. I walked up and grabbed her by her hair. I said, no, I'm not in here. You're not come out of her. In Jesus' name. So, so how do we get the... How, this, 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 all these miracles happen. This woman gets a new heart. How do we get it? Great preaching? No. Lady told me, don't try to do this for a living. How, how did we get that? Ross set the tone for the meeting. I dare you to come. God will heal you. See, we, we've heard the word so long so that we would have that stance with God so that we could decrease some things and some things would happen. It's kind of hard to be bold if you're under attack all the time. That's why the Lord says use your authority. Why? Because there's some unseen heavenly things that he wants to do. Look how many people get, got saved over one miracle. One miracle and all these people gave their life to the Lord. That's the book of Acts. Well, I didn't ask angels to appear, but I tell you what it was. It was Ross uh, uh, literally putting that command out and daring them. The Bible says that boldness means to dare to do. First thing Peter said to add to your faith was, was boldness, lack of caution in your faith. We've gotten to the point right here before the coming of the Lord where it, the church is so cautious we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We want to make sure we're, uh, you know, everybody's, it, it's, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't imagine Noah getting up on the boat going, did I hurt anybody's feelings today? <laughs> There's a flood coming. You might want to get in. I mean, could you imagine Noah? Uh, is this tender enough for everybody? You know what I'm saying? I don't think he preached like that. But God's raised you up to have a walk with God that you know who he is. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. We were talking about it this morning. Like, you need to be careful when you're getting near a, a, a cemetery so you don't raise somebody up. That's right. Amen. Because right. Elisha did it with absorption. It got absorbed in his bones. You don't have absorption. He's in you. You see, people say, that's crazy. No, it's God. Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. I guess I'll finish up with little Fred Couples. There we go, right there. That turn and that swing right there. Man, oh, man. Isn't it wonderful that God got you in a time just before the rapture of the church so that you could decree some things, you could do some things, you could bring people in and watch them get healed? I believe right before we leave, you'll have a, a conveyor, a car park over there, a conveyor belt. You guys are laying hands on people. They go out that building, that side over there, go to a new member's class, and then they come in and start laying hands on people again. I mean, I'm telling you that, uh, that A. Allen's son, when he told me that, he goes, I see a day when everyone's operating like a few did in the 50s. Now, I don't know how long that'll be. I think it'll probably be like a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks, but it's going to have to take people that walk with God. I mean, Lake's whole staff, they ask him, how, 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 how are they staying alive? He said, put the, put the uh, plague on the microscope. They touched, he touched the edge of the, of the microscope. The plague died. Hmm. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes us free from the law of sin and death. Now, there's so much you could get into about the ministry of angels. I mean, it's just, uh, and, and I, I don't see angels every day. I, as soon as you preach on this, people walk up, oh, they, go, they go like this, I see angels every day. And they got that weird look, and I'm like, oh, my God, run for your life. <laughs> but we should have revelation gifts in operation. We should have power gifts in operation. We should have the vocal gifts in operation because the Holy Ghost is here and he loves you and wants you to experience some wonderful things. So I, I don't, just, th this message tonight is to take any limitation off what God can do through you. And think it, think it not strange that even with the ministry of angels, just radical things happen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for everyone that came on Sunday night, Lord. You wanted impartation for them. And we thank you for the equipment that you've given the church, Lord, that we would have the word of God, the name of Jesus, gifts of the Spirit, and even at times the ministry of angels to bring an immediate change. Father, help us be more aware of what we carry and what, what equipment you've given your church. Every person in this room fully supplied. Every person in this room fully supplied. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. 
Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Somebody, you got damage in your lungs, like somebody sitting on your lungs. Like a, a, just a, cr- a crushing pressure on your lungs. You're healed in Jesus' name. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. One thing is uh, your jaw. You got some kind of damage coming up right up through here. And I, I don't know what it is, but you're, you're healed. Thank you, Lord. That's sweet of you. That's kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, thank you for the ministry of angels. Forgive us for, for, for drawing back, trying to fit into society that doesn't know you. But we know you, Jesus. You are the resurrection and the life. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. We behold you, glorify you, magnify you, King of kings, Lord of lords, bright and morning star, lily of the valley, firstborn from the dead, shepherd and the bishop of our souls, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you for blessing people. Thank you for blessing people. Praise God. Now, this is kind of weird, but I, I learned not to even think about it. Where your trachea, you got some kind of damage where your trachea would be right there. I don't know what it is, but you're being healed. I prayed for a guy in Indiana. I said, someone's here. You can't write. Never even heard of that. The guy come up to me afterwards, bawling. He goes, I've never written before in my whole life. It's kind of like dyslexia. He said, you called that out? He said, I wrote, wrote a poem about the coming of the Lord. So God will help you write. <laughs> He'll fix anything. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nosebleeds. Somebody, you got nosebleeds. You won't have them anymore. 7.56. Sunday night. No no more nosebleeds. I see your head laying back like that and you're holding the towel over your face trying to keep yourself from bleeding. No more nosebleeds. Hallelujah. What is that, Lord? What is that? Right here. Right here where you, you have an area around your hips, you know? Like this area right around your hips, like where your, I guess where your sockets are. You got some kind of damage right there. It, look, it looks like it looks like cobwebs. Amen. You, it's gone. It's gone. When you get home tonight, do a cartwheel. Do whatever you need to do. I mean, go out in the front yard and just do it. You know what Shambach did when he started having a heart attack? He's on the freeway, started having a heart attack, pulled over in the car and took off running. Devil, you can't kill me. Glory to God. Let's thank him one more time, then we'll go. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I know you say it to me, and I'll say it to them, Lord. You love them so much. You're not mad at them. You're not frustrated with them. You love them. You love them. And Father, you, you said we are one here in Hebrews, so help us function like we are one with Jesus and one with you. Wow, we can't wait to see you, Father. Can't wait to see you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, show us things to come. And we glorify you, magnify you, and honor you. In Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody said amen. Hey, real quick before we go, I know it's Sunday night, but is there anybody that you've never given your life to the Lord? Maybe you came on Sunday night and you haven't done that. With the uplifted hand, say, that's me. Pray for me. I want to I want to get saved tonight. I want to give my life to the Lord. Man, think about it. I was in Saskatoon. I gave the altar call. A 96-year-old man raised his hand. I went down to him and prayed with him. The next day, I went to the airport. Pastor Keith Johnson called me. He said, that 96-year-old man went home to be with the Lord last night. That's cutting it pretty close, so you don't, don't want to wait until you're the last day on the planet. So if you're here tonight and you've never done that, let's do it tonight. Amen. Anyone at all. Now, we're family here. No one's, we're not going to embarrass you. We, we, we love you. We're just going to pray for you. You're with family. We love you. Not critiquing you, not judging you. Zero. All right, looks like everybody's saved. How about filled with the Spirit? You say, well, I may be here, but I'm not being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus said you'd be endued with power, not weirdness, power. So your heavenly language is to build you up to where you're, you, you're a fortress, Im- impenetrable. From, from the enemy. Anyone at all you want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit tonight? With the uplift today and say, that's me, that's me. Pray for me. I want to get filled tonight. Don't want to miss anybody. Anybody at all. How cool to get it just before Jesus comes. Anyone at all, real quick. Praise God. Amen. Looks like everybody's filled. I'll do like that prophet I work for. He'd get down off the platform and go, well, we'll see how filled you are. Every one of you had the tongue, had the doctrine, and everybody go, yeah. <laughs> see, that's that prophet's ministry. That's in your face. But boy, it sure shakes some things up. Just want to make, make sure one more time. Anybody want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Anybody doesn't have it and wants it tonight? Amen. Amen. She, she wants it. She just, she just grabbed her arm and put it up. She doesn't want to get She's like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Don't worry. You, no one's ever going to make you get filled with the Spirit. Isn't it something the Holy Spirit's a gentleman? He's calm. He's sweet. He's kind. Thank you guys for being so easy to preach to. I get excited when I see the stuff you guys, you guys do the coolest stuff ever. I talk about you guys as church. I mean, look at those things in the back, too. I didn't talk about those. Those are so cool. Uh, you got great things ahead. 
radical things ahead. Don't be weary in well-doing. Be bold, be daring, and walk with God. So we're going to see him so soon. Amen, amen. Sure appreciate you coming. I'm just checking to make sure you don't miss a miracle. Don't want to miss a miracle. Well, have a wonderful night. Man, oh man, praise the Lord. Wow. Give a Pastor Nate a good hand as he comes. Amen. Thank you, sir. Whew. Good to be with you. Praise God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a little weird right there. I can't talk into your phone, but you know, you do it all the time. You know, I was sitting there and I was thinking. I was just thinking uh, I was thinking about the days when I was a young man more like I was sitting over in this section in other words just hungry for the Lord and just wanting the Lord to do something for me or just a demonstration I was sitting there tonight and I was like, Lord, I know it, sound, it might sound strange, Lord, show us something or um, just a heart cry to say, teach us like a father would teach his son to change the oil on the car. That just was, was a heart prayer many times for me um, in the things of the Spirit, you know, uh, the ways of the Spirit and just... Uh, in demonstration and just, you know, because how many of you know Paul said that my words were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but by but through the preaching of the word and demonstration and power. So as I sat there tonight, and, and I, I, here's a, another hang up for me. Whenever you have a guest minister, there's, um, there's pieces. Uh, there's, I, I believe God brings us in for a whole piece. Like I don't believe when God brings somebody in, it's like you got to finish their message. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So for me, it's always like a really weighty thing if you're supposed to, you know, anything. And the Lord dropped this in my heart. He said, I, I'm, I need you to share the, just this piece. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't want this. Anyway, in Acts, as I was asking the Lord for that tonight, and just thanking the Lord for uh, just being, I was just hungry. I was just remember just crying. I don't know if you've ever been there, but you're crying out for the Lord, for the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, do something, do something. And so you want to see it, you want to have somebody show you so that maybe you could imitate that. Do you know what I'm talking about? And the Lord said um, to, to my heart, he was speaking there. He said, I don't, I don't want somebody, I don't want somebody else to know me. I want you to know me. And he brought me this scripture. He said, and it was the scripture where Peter I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And this is the, se the seven sons of Sceva. They were trying to cast out demons. And these demons said, Peter I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Even the demons know who you are because when you become in Christ, they know who recognize who you are. But, I, but so I was, I, that verse was popped into me, into my heart. And, and so I looked it up. And here's what he said. And the Lord said, I don't want somebody else to know God for you. I want you to know that you can know me and every person here can know me. And this is what the verse, as I read in context, it opened like this. And God was doing, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Who was doing the miracles? By the hands of Paul. By the hands of Braden. By the hands of Lance. By the hands. These hands have to move. But God was doing it. And I was just like, Lord, thank you for that. For this, in this, out, these people. This is what the ministry was about tonight. Was about, it wasn't about watch me. It was about go and be. Go and be. Use, that's what tonight was about. It was about your expectation. It was about uh, get, uh, allowing uh, the boldness uh, of your heart the Bible says and Jesus was moved with compassion 
that, that, that the heart would move you, that God moves this way. Love moves you. I love what you say on the gifts of the Spirit. If you want to move with God, just think about being helpful. Just, just Lord, how do you, Lord, what do you want to do today? How can I, however you want to help somebody today. And this is what, this is what that is. And so I just wanted to close tonight by just number one saying thank you. But also just uh, even us as the stand tonight. Um, thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for intimacy. I just want you to see it like um, as your hands are lifted. I just want you to see uh, like taking hold of your Father's hand. Father, I thank you for intimacy. Just walking with you. I thank you for taking the, uh, the heart, the effort, or the uh, striving away just the simplicity of walking with you. And I thank you for just a people that know their God. That we know and they will do great exploits. Father, thank you that by by the hands of these people, you do great things. We thank you that everywhere uh, we, we go, uh, that, you send, that you send us, that there's a, there's a light and a salt and, and, and the good news uh, of, of Jesus is, is preached uh, in, both in word and in demonstration, the love by these hands, by these hands. I thank you for just even that, that the declaration. You can, just the normal but great expectation with you just moving with the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the impartation. And thank you just for those pictures. Just walking it out. Just the boldness to walk it out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I love what Brother Joe was talking about, even just walking it out. You know, he said, I saw this, and so what do you do? You just walk out what you see. This is, this is, well, I just, I just saw this. So you walk it out. You know, this doesn't just happen here. This happens when you just check in with the Lord. Like he said, in the spirit, you know, you know, you don't have to wait to be a Sunday morning in three songs to be in the spirit. You just check your, you just as you walk, as you walk. Amen. Amen. And God bless you guys as you go this evening. Um, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. And uh, don't forget to check out the, again, the End Times Made Easy book. Super helpful, great tool. Um, And anyway, God bless you. Have a great, great week. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the word of God. 